Thanks, Ken Corla. Um, I think uh, we all found it highly ironic that at a time when the country was, you know, voting, when many of us were campaigning to put women at the centre of their own lives and their own health care in the Eighth Amendment referendum, that at the same time the government was ensnared in a scandal where women's health and views were utterly diminished. Um, it's now been confirmed in the report. Paternalism runs through and ran through women's health. Um, now, medical misogyny is a term that has been used, and doing medicine on the cheap is another term that I would use. Because, Minister, you gave the impression, you said that uh, you were satisfied now with the quality management of the labs, and that that was confirmed by the report. But I think uh, that isn't confirmed by the report. The central issue is actually, and I'll go into that now and what's said in the report, is the testing service that led to the errors in the first place, and it is not true that the labs were given a clean bill of health. Um, I also want to mention the group that came up from Cork yesterday, Women's Lives Matter is the name of the group. They had a petition of 1,200 names. They wanted to meet you personally. I know that may not always be possible. But they uh, were disappointed that they couldn't, haven't travelled up, but they did ask if you would meet them. There are women affected by this scandal as well, and I, I really think that you should agree, Minister, because their, um, their, their ultimate request is that this should be kept, uh, not outsourced, but public in this country where multidisciplinary teams can confer on issues, not in countries with a different time zone, and not for profit, that it will be done in the public health system and not outsourced. So ju just in relation to uh, the, the, the central issues in the report, I, I, it's very frustrating actually because 10 minutes is not enough for groups to, to discuss this. It really is. Uh, it's unfortunate, you know. I mean, I've got a lot of points. I read the report and I can't make them. We should have had more time, Minister. This is the biggest issue, you know, all over the last few months. I'm just going to have to cut myself off here, but I mean, there's important issues that do have to be trashed out. But I do want to mention, you know, Vicky, Stephen, Emma, Lorraine, Ruth, and many others who are now household names for all of the wrong reasons. You know, they never wanted to be, but they have made such a difference. I want to acknowledge that. But I want to take up the issue of the labs. Um, in Chapter 6 of the report, the US based labs question CPL. First of all, they never had the required international accreditation. That is what's said in the report. There was two levels of accreditation, and a lot of the labs didn't have the international standard. So that's the first point. CPL, which is owned by Sonic, examined 300,000 Irish samples. One third of them were outsourced to other labs, uh, in, in, and the tests ended up in Honolulu, Las Vegas, Victoria, San Antonio, and Cervical Check didn't even know that. And you're telling me that this, everything is hunky-dory in the labs? Um, also, Scully asks in the report, what was the nature, how many tests did they do, what was their compliance with quality and regulatory standards? And this is relevant today because Sonic is the mother company of MedLab, and they are right now proposing more outsourcing of Irish tests, and this time to Australia. Um, in terms of quality assurance and the visits that were made, yes, it's true that Scully says that, you know, for the tests in that uh, particular country or region, they were up to standard, but they weren't up to international standard, and they all had different standards. Uh, CPL in, in 2011 were asked about their, uh, their standards, but the, and he says there's no record of what happened subsequently, you know, when, when errors were identified. It was the under-reporting of low-level cervical cancers, which is a very dangerous thing because they can then develop. Um, they identified a consistent error by one pathologist who was training other people, and nothing ever happened. Uh, no consideration was made to the wider impact on the training of other staff. The, the other issue is the fiddling of figures by Quest. In 2014, there was 1,224 cases of false negatives. Again, I'm, I'm rushing here. But uh, they, Quest were claiming a 3.19 rate of, of error, but actually it was 17.6%, according to Scali. On, uh, in the report. So using different labs in other countries with all different testing and definitions of abnormality. And the other thing is cost, Minister. Why is it that cost became increasingly a consideration for contracts being awarded? In, 
In 2008, it was 20% of the criteria. By 2010, it was 35%. And by 2012, it was 40%. Because this country was in a bailout programme, things had to be cut, and cost became much more important. And you're telling me that that wouldn't impact on the testing of women. Now, in 2016, there's many competitions, and 80% of the criteria is the cost. So this is, you know, doing medicine on the cheap. Again, very little time, but Quest have generated profits of 7.7 billion, and just finishing Count Corla, and Sonic had a net revenue of 3.5 billion. We should bring these testing under the public health system in this country, min uh, Minister. It is not fair or right to say that there's no issue arising from the report, and we need, definitely need further investigation of these issues.